we broke the barricade. They've sent in a sent in a negotiator. My in studio guest today, my good friend, uh, a Texas Tech law graduate. He sat as a Lubbock County Republican Party precinct chair, uh, two or three times uh, selected to the Lubbock County Republican Party convention platform committee. Uh, he sat as legislative director in Austin for House, House District 83 Representative Dustin Burroughs. Uh, he's building up quite a – oh, and Dorinda Warren's campaign. Got to do a little campaign time. In-studio guest Brian Thornton, and uh, we've got Harper with us today. She's hanging out with a, a gorgeous panda uh, watching her daddy, making sure he didn't make a fool of himself. So she's his advisor today. How you doing, Brian? Doing well, Steve. Morning. Hey, I asked you by today. You got to hear – a whole bunch of the testimony that happened on the party platform sure. and, and, and kind of where I was steering the show today was what we do without the party, why the party's important. And if it just completely dissolves, we have nothing to get behind. So the platform is really the meat and potatoes, the platform and the database that we're able to reach and, and get out and generate people. So, uh, so I want you to come in today and, and maybe tell us about the process, how it all works for the platform. And what were some of the hotly contested issues you had? Okay, well, you know, <clears throat> and this is something I think uh, going forward, you know, I think we as a party, a local party, could maybe do a better job of just getting people filled in on on this process, um, the precinct and county convention process. Um, I'm not sure that you're, you know, nine out of ten voters that go pull the lever. I guess that's kind of an outdated term now, but... Uh, on primary day know that they can go and participate in this process. But we did see uh, some new folks this time. And basically what it is uh, for th- on the platform end is, you know, if, uh, if you could file a bill, any bill uh, in the world, uh, you can just bring that up uh, at your precinct convention and you can debate it with anybody that shows up. You know, a lot of times uh, as a party we're going we're gonna to be in step on a lot of issues, so there may not even be a debate. It will just be – you know, you'll vote with uh, your and precinct You're referring delegates. to a resolution. A resolution, That, that would, yes. would call for the state to take action in form of a bill. Right, or it could call for the repeal of of, of, a, of a bill or of a law or or a tax or, or anything. I mean, any issue that's important to you, you can file a resolution. And um, what happens is at the precinct level, it'll get debated, and if it goes up, it'll get debated at the uh, county level. Uh, by the committee it'll first go to the committee and i've been on that committee three times and it's a really interesting process um you know you you get to learn a lot about a lot of issues you got to be able to you know you got to be informed on a lot of issues Uh, you got to be able to defend yours and uh if you can keep your mouth closed and your mind open you might actually learn something from somebody else on that committee and so it's a good process so uh and this is not going to be a fair question but uh would you say that your politics, that you're more on the the libertarian side of, of issues, uh, you know, and I know you get to, you kind of swing around some. You've got some pretty passionate opinions back and forth. But would you say you take more of the libertarian view than – Well, I I consistently want government out of my life so and, and others. Uh, so I want the government out of your pocketbook. I want – I don't want them, you know, peeking in your bedroom windows and – Things like that, and uh, there's different names for it, but libertarian, cap- lowercase <laughs> l, is one of them. And so if you have to put a label, that one would stick. Uh, you, you could probably make that <laughs> stick. <laughs> Visiting with Brian Thornton, uh, Chad Hasty Show. Um, rundown, uh, what was the most contested uh, platform plank, the hottest issue out there? Well, there were a couple, but uh, this time around, this, this time uh, the vaccine issue came up again. Uh, we had we had some folks come to us during the permanent committee at the convention and say, "Hey, you know, I've I, I've been suffering from illness. I've had a compromised immune system. I send my kids to public schools. Um, people that don't vaccinate their kids are making my kids, you know, more susceptible, and therefore me more susceptible to illnesses. And so we really had to kind of balance this uh, issue of, you know, are you you know, does your liberty to choose the medical, um, you know, how how to how to handle your children's medical care? Where, how do you balance that with 
you know, you're partic- partaking in a public good in a public school. So should we have some say as a as a government in in who who gets vaccines or at least at, at a minimum? And this was the issue is <clears throat> should they should the kids have to, you know, disclose to the school and not necessarily to the public, but should the schools have some kind of record about um, about how many kids are not vaccinated and this and that and the other? And it was it was a it was a tough debate, and we we certainly had that come up. So okay, so we were talking about the resolution process, how this enters. So going into the temporary committee, and folks, when we talk about temporary and permanent committees, everything's temporary until the day of the convention. And then, uh, Harper's sticking with us now. Uh, everything is temporary until you, actual convention, and then we transition to a permanent committee, and it's basically a brand new committee, but it happens very quickly, but usually the same members transition. So going into the temporary process, did we have a plank in there that had anything to do with vaccines? And then what was, if you remember, what was the resolution that kind of got that in in gear? We had a pre-existing plank that, you know, is, it's, I think it's pretty well in line with our principles, which is, you know, hey, uh, it's my, my, my family, my, my, my children, I get to direct their medical care. Um, and uh, and so we had somebody in the permanent and, – and that wasn't really debated at all in the temporary committee. Um, but it, it, when, it, when it came to the, the convention and the permanent committee, we had somebody bring up kind of a counter-argument like, hey, you know, I've, I've got some rights here. My kids have rights to not be exposed to, you know, diseases unnecessarily uh, in a public, public school. Right. And it was it – was, uh, we – and when uh, we actually made the change to try to accommodate that, um, we had we had somebody get wind of that and and come up and debate the other side of it. And the and the resolution of that was, if I remember correctly, we did strip uh, we stripped some language back out. So the right. stance of the party is it's still an individual right. responsibility to uh, yes. handle vaccinations whether you want to or not. Right. So so that was uh, well, yeah, that was pretty contested. That probably raised. Uh, the most debate off the floor. Off the floor. There wasn't a lot of floor debate on no. it. I was kind of, you know, folks, Yeah, we go to these conventions really because we're looking for a fight. Uh, we want to see people debate. Debate is fun. It is. And from debate comes intelligent thoughts and, right. and thoughts of many. And you try to condense those into a body of work that you can all get behind and you can try to hold your elected officials accountable to. So these issues are, I mean, they're important to us, and uh, and you can be part of this process. Is is the thing that we're the the message that we're trying to send. Mm-hmm. So, what was another one? Uh, what you know that was a hotly contested issue? I don't know about hotly contested, but we certainly debated um, the Texas uh, secession issue. We talked about the Article Five Convention. Um, that was kind of just you know ironing out some of the language uh governor abbott wanted you know his plan his plan in our platform uh one of his representatives uh fought to have that in there um uh, medical cannabis came up and was was pretty pretty hotly debated. Now let's so, talk about that one uh, right. cannabis is always fun so sure. the uh uh what was the resolution that started the the cannabis agreement because we don't we didn't have that in the platform before we've Tried to insert that two or three times. Mm-hmm. Um, what what was the issue with um, cannabis? It was just hey, you know, we support the medical use uh, pretty generally. Um, it wasn't a, a, a long resolution or anything. And that's one thing we've tried to do is, uh, you know, you, like you said, the thing is thirty thirty six thirty seven pages long, and we, we've tried to condense that down and try to keep our our planks in it relatively concise. So. <clears throat> Uh, it was just you know, hey, we support medical freedom, and um, and that got debated on the floor. Um, Robert Pratt actually spoke against it, and he said that hey, you know, if our legislators want to do this, fine, but uh, this doesn't need to be in our platform. And I'm going to go ahead and call him out because he knows damn good and well that our platform is for the very purpose of. Um, giving our elected officials some direction. And that's why Governor Abbott wanted his Article 5 uh, plank in there, and why they insisted on, you know, we voted that down in committee. I personally didn't think our platform's a place for a particular candidate to get election, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to campaign for anybody in particular in our platform, but they had it introduced on the floor and it ultimately get 
got put in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think that was a good argument. Um, so w- so when we look at that, though, the, the debate was split. To me, it looked like if we want to throw labels on it, it was probably split down the evangelical side. And, and probably the, the debate was also split down, maybe an age gap. I would I would say that's probably a fair assessment. Although you know we had some evangelicals in the in the actual committee that that were on board with it, um, <clears throat> that <clears throat> that might actually go to the age thing you were talking about. But you know honestly, uh, I think I think as opposed to evangelical, it's it's prohibitionist. Um, you know, if you look at some of the people that spoke against the resolution on the floor. There's some of the same people that were fighting to keep Lubbock dry, and they'd still probably have us dry or completely have alcohol banned if it were up to them. Right. So uh, I think it's just that kind of old progressive era, um, you know, prohibitionist mindset that, you know, I can I can micromanage your life. I can legislate, you know, morality, and, you know, yeah. I, I think it's proven to not work, and that's why we try to keep it in there. All right. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take the break. When we come back, we're visiting with Brian Thornton. We'll get uh, more of his thoughts on uh, the contested issues of Lubbock County and how that moves on into state. I'm Steve Evans in for Chad Hasty. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back on the Chad Hasty Show, I'm Steve Evans in for Chad today with a little good Friday Van Halen, Jody DJ in today. Fantastic music. Sitting with Brian Thornton, my good friend. Uh, who has uh, tuned in to party politics, state politics. So we were talking about uh, platform issues. I believe you have called out Robert Pratt on cannabis. That's right. Try to set you up, see if he'll call in. Uh, hit us with the text line. We've got the phone lines open, folks. If you want to you wanna weigh in on some of these issues, go for it. Call in and, uh, and talk to Brian. He was uh, He's responsible for the entire Lubbock County Republican Party platform. It was all him. We can point fingers. We can blame it all on him. He he inserted the planks that support Trump. It's it's all his fault. So uh, yeah, let me have it. So cannabis was uh, was contested, yep. and, and you know I've heard a lot of arguments on both sides of it. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I'll, I'll call my wife out. She's she's kind of torn on it. She thinks that medical research with cannabis is a good thing. Um, the evangelical position is 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 it's all bad. Uh, we need to keep it all out because it'll cause the the degradation of uh, of our society, and uh, you know I see that argument too. So uh, it was interesting, and we did have some floor testimony on that. I don't know if you remember that or not. We uh, didn't. I can't recall what what was. Uh, someone had a position, uh, if you recall it, uh, take off here. I can't remember. Is it something about Houston and and drugs? Oh, right. That was the argument that if um, if we allow doctors to prescribe it, that doctors will abuse that you know privilege and they'll just be ah, writing right. it willy-nilly well my argument to that is we already we have laws in place for that i mean if you go around as a doctor writing prescriptions to hydrocodone left and right with without good cause i mean you can lose your license you can, i mean there's probably a stiff criminal penalty probably a felony and that does happen um, and and it does happen but we don't prohibit those drugs because that happens so yeah um, oh hey we have a we have sparked a caller. Let's go to the phones. Bobby, you're on KFYO. Nope. Oh, I, it was line one. Okay. Well, we lost yeah, him. Yeah, I miss hit the button there. Bobby, call us back. Call us right back, Bobby. We we hung up on you. We want to hear what you have to say. Uh, so the the argument was that doctors could abuse that privilege. Right. Um, and again, it just kind of that speaks to this kind of nanny state mentality that we're supposed to be against as a party. Well, someone might do something bad, therefore we have to, you know, get government in the way. And I just I don't see that as the case. I think we need to take personal responsibility. We have mechanisms to defend against that, protect against that. Um, if we enforce those, we we should be fine. Okay, and we see, I mean, we see uh, abuse of prescription drugs all the time. Is sure. that, in your opinion, is that any different? You know, is it's it, it's not a lot different. I mean. You know, you, I mean, in everything we do, I mean, driving down the road, we weigh, you know, safety and, and freedom. Uh, and so, you know, I think as a party, we need to, we need to kind of, you know, we, we, we in Texas have the Sunset Commission, and its job is to kind of look at government programs, government agencies, and reevaluate. You know, Reagan said, closest thing we'll ever get 
to immortality is is a government program. And that's why in Texas we have the Sunset uh, Commission to look at these programs and see if we still need them. I think we need to take a look at marijuana prohibition, especially on the medical end, and uh, and and do a sun, sunset review and say, hey, look, is this working? Has it ever worked? Uh, was it a good law in the first place? And I think the answer to those is no on all fronts. Now, there was some advancements in uh, in cannabis in the last legislature. They did get they Very did true. make a, an incremental step, and that was. Uh, and I don't remember exactly what it was. It was one particular type of ep- epilepsy right. that uh, uh, a bill passed. They're calling it intractable e- epilepsy, which means um, you know you've tried to treat it with all kinds of drugs. Um, and so what the what 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 the legislature passed and Governor Abbott signed into law is a uh, very limited um, cannabis bill that basically allows for the. Uh, use of an extract that has low THC, THC being the intoxicating compound in the in the plant, mm-hmm. and um, so uh, but you've got to get two doctors' prescriptions. It's highly regulated by um, DPS, I believe it is, and I mean it's you, they can come in and search you and inspect you, and you have to have GPS tracking on every plant. I mean it's it's a big government program, and uh, we expect to see uh, probably some. I mean, you know, once this thing gets off the ground, I think it'll prove to be kind of ineffective. But uh, to your point about the evangelicals, you know, we had an evangelical state legislator, David Simpson, introduce a, a full repeal of marijuana prohibition. And on the grounds that, hey, God God created this plant. He didn't create a mistake that government needs to fix. So I, th- I think there's evangelicals on both ends of this. and uh, I think right now, you know, some of the prohibitionists are are maybe still on the on in the majority. So, um, so really, I mean, I I saw the uh, the cannabis issue and the vaccination issue were probably the two largest ones. Uh, in in last cycle, um, the definition of gay marriage was the big issue, and mm-hmm. did that get debated at all? Um, we had. Um we didn't debate that one this time around. I, th- I think even though last time it was very close, I think we had to do a roll call vote last time. Basically, all we did is take a, you know, the thing was like a third of a page long and we trimmed it down, uh, cut out, you know, what some would say maybe was some uh, inflammatory language. And that got defeated and all that stuff got put back yeah. in. Let me uh, let me interrupt you just quick. We've got a caller on the line. Okay. Amanda. Jody, go ahead and hit Hi that there. one. Amanda, you're on KFW. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you both doing? Great. Hey, Amanda. Well, y'all are doing a pretty good job explaining the process. I just kind of wanted to weigh in just a little bit. Um, One concern I had was that a lot of people, and I think you were talking about this too, Brian, that a lot of people don't know how the process works and how to actually get their input um, into the party platform on the local level and the state level as well. So I just kind of wanted to send a message out to people that if they're able to get their resolutions ready ahead of time, where they can write it out, get with the group, get with an organization that they trust, um, and, and look and see if there are already resolutions written out and actually have language that they'd like to input. And I think that is a real important point to make. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, maybe keep a running list throughout the year when issues come up. You know, that way, you know, a week before primary, you're not scrambling. Like, okay, what resolutions do I do? Maybe keep a list or a, a file on your computer uh, right, as these right. issues come up. Right, and you want to get those in on the precinct level. So you mm-hmm. want to pay attention to when your precinct conventions happen. They used to be right after election night or election day once the polls closed then you would go in everybody knew where it was at because you voted at the same place in your precinct and everybody gets together since they've changed that i think it's kind of you know a little bit different than it used to be and so a lot of people don't realize that they've got to go and keep in touch with their party uh website and make sure that they understand that those precinct conventions are very important that's the, the the closest level yeah, Amanda, Amanda, I, I got to get going. We're up against a break. Uh, thanks for calling. Uh, I want to thank my guest, Brian Thornton, for coming by today. And, uh, we, you know, there's a lot more discussions to have about uh, how the local party process works. We've covered it uh, quite extensively on this show. 
but uh, we can still do a better job. So, man, uh, thanks for coming out. and uh, Thanks for having me. Thanks for fighting the good fight.